Here we have the two pieces that belong to the Solstice Coupe. Problem with this belt trim, you cannot buy the belt trim anymore from GM. They only made about 1,300 of these cars, didn't make many spares. So you've got the right and left belt trim here. We've completed one set of belt trim, completely finished it. You notice the difference in quality as to finish and the bumps. Remember the bumps are hail bumps. We're going to show you how to take the hail bumps out real quick and then we're going to show you how to turn it into the good looking piece next to it so that they'll both match. Here we have the three tools we're going to use. We're going to use a normal double-ended body hammer. We're going to use a long nose pliers. And we're going to use what's called a spoon dolly. And the spoon dolly, take it out of the vise for you to see it. It's quite thin. Put the spoon dolly back in the vise because we need it held in place for what we're going to do. When we look at our trim, the way the trim is constructed is you see you have rubber and it's encapsulated around an internal metal piece that we cannot see the metal piece. It's completely molded around it. So when a piece of hail hits it, you get a dent. And what's actually dented is the metal underneath. We have to straighten that metal even though it's encased in rubber. So that is how you're going to fix it. We're going to show you how we do that now. Our first step, you see we have a hail dent there. Let's take a long nose pliers. We're going to move along here very carefully and bend it up. And what we're really bending is the metal underneath the rubber. You aren't bending the rubber per se, you're bending the metal underneath. And for the most part, we got most of it out. Now, you take your trim, put it on the spoon dolly, try to get this as flat as possible. I use the smaller side of this body hammer. And you're noticing I'm using the spoon dolly as my anvil. And I have removed most of my problem. Now if I still have a little dent, like I have a little one here, I can then go back and repeat the process with little bits of movement with my long nose pliers and if necessary go back to the spoon dolly and tap on it. So we're going to do that and we're going to get this all straightened out. Then we're going to show you how to restore the finish on it. good. Here we have our finished piece that we've straightened with the method we've shown you. Now we've got quadruple lot steel wool and we're going to steel wool the whole piece. We'll go along and steel wool everything off as best as we possibly can. And that's producing a more uniform dull surface, uh, dull and shiny like we had. Remember I said quadruple lot. You want the finest steel wool you can get when you're doing this. And this brand new piece, rubbing it down. So once you get it all rubbed down good, you're taking off the old shiny surface to a large extent. Now we're going to wipe it down with some pre-cleaner. We have Prepol Wax and Grease Remover. And use a little bit of that paper towel here and we're going to clean the surface with that you notice what's going to happen you're going to get a whole bunch of residue so you're going to get that off your surface and you got to let this dry here we have the next step and you see you can't read it this is a natural gloss vinyl, plastic, and rubber dressing. It's a 3M product back when I got it. It lasts forever because I've still got it. I probably had 20 years. Wish I could read a number off of it for you. I can't, but there should be similar products available. So you need a vinyl, plastic, and rubber dressing compound. That's what we've got in here. What it looks like, if you were to look down in here, it looks like milk, kind of like thick milk. You'll need another fresh paper towel, a couple of them, fold them over, get it well soaked, 
and you want to wipe this on the entire surface. It somewhat beads up, but it also spreads out. Now again, you're going to let this sit here and dry for a while, and then you can do another coat on it. And two, maybe three coats, and let them dry between. And the end result is going to be what we've got over here, which looks basically pretty new compared to the part we started with. And so both the parts will be able to be used on Trisha's car again, even though we could not buy new ones from GM. So if you get hail damage or need to do a belt molding just because it's old, now you've seen some tricks as to how you can do a belt molding that has a metal part inside with the rubber encasing the whole thing.